And he says, it's going to be a challenge. You get the prophets of Baal and I'm going to stand for God and you get a bullock and you can cut them, but don't put no fire under and the God that answers by fire, let him be God. The Bible says the prophets of Baal, amen, they begin to put that bullock on. I asked myself a question, Pastor Tom. I said, why did they accept the challenge? And then I realized when I looked in and I read about Job, I realized that the devil caused fire to come down and burn his house. So it wasn't something that the enemy couldn't do. But what they didn't count on was the manifested power of almighty God to be present on the scene. What am I trying to tell you? The things the devil used to be able to do, he's not going to be able to do because of the anointing that is upon your life. He used to make you cry. He can't make you cry no more. He used to make you fall. He can't make you fall no more. He used to have the victory. But tonight, God's going to give you the victory under the power of the Holy Ghost. All of a sudden, they kept calling on the powers of darkness, trying to get that fire to fall. But everything stopped. Nothing would manifest. Everything just stopped. And the Bible says there was no voice. There was no sound. There was no fire. Neighbor, you might as well shout. God just made your enemy stop. is now just going through the motions but he has no power Elijah begins to mock him nothing begins to happen and eventually the enemy's time has run out could you look at your neighbor and help me preach and say neighbor for everything the devil does he has a time limit he can mess with Jesus in the wilderness until his time is up and Jesus is going to say get thee behind me Satan he can throw three boys in the fiery furnace until his time is up and the fourth man going to step in the middle of the fire he can throw you in the lion's den but when his time is up the angels come in to shut the lion's mouth and I come to tell somebody by the power of the Holy Ghost the devil's time is up three people and say the devil's time is up the devil's time is up it's your time to shout it's your time to preach it's your time to dance it's your time to run it's your time to fight it's your time to sing this is your time shout like this your time shout like you are victory It's Elijah's turn. He said, you lay that bullock on that altar and dash it with water. Dash it with water again. Dash it with water again. Why? Say, neighbor, God wants to make sure you know that when the fire comes, it's not coincidence. When the fire comes, it's not by accident.
But when the fire falls, it's because the Holy Ghost made up his mind. It's time to set this thing on fire. I come to preach to a Sunday school. God said to tell you, it's time to set it on fire. I come to preach to a youth group. God said it's time to set it on fire. I come to preach to a dry daddy. God said, daddy, it's time you get on fire. I come to preach to a mother. God said, mother, it's time to get on fire. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm already on fire. So all I gotta do is grab your hands and set you on flame. Shout for the fire of the Holy Ghost. the anointing. Lift your hands up and give God 30 seconds of your best praise. My Sunday school is about to be on fire. My youth group is about to be on fire. Shout! 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 I feel the anointing! I feel Elijah says, before I do anything, we're going to fix this altar that y'all knock down running your own way. Because fire can't fall on a broken altar. He said, fix it. Because that's your covenant relationship with God. That's the spot where divinity meets humanity. Tell your neighbor, put the stone back. You ain't said nothing to nobody. Say, neighbor, put the stones back. Tell your neighbor, put the stone back of prayer and get your prayer life back. Put the stone back of praise and get your praise back. Put the stone back of worship and get your worship back. Put the stone back of holiness and live holy. Put the stone back of the blood for the blood of Jesus. Speak of better things than that of Abel's. Put the stone back of the anointing for the anointing of God. It breaks every yoke. Put the stone back of Holy Ghost power because it's time to get the Holy Ghost back in every church. Shout like you want it back. We need the glory back. We need the power back. We need the anointing back. We need sanctification back. And when they fix the altar, he looked up and prayed and tell your neighbor the fire fell and when the people saw the fire not your coldness not your dryness not being dead forgetting how to shout don't know how to praise him that wasn't gonna get it but when they saw the fire Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, they got to see the fire on you. When they see the fire, the Bible says, they fell down and said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Could you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm going home on fire. And my brothers and sisters are going to fall on their knees and say, the Lord, he is God. Fire in the courthouse. Fire in the schoolhouse. Fire for the mayor. Fire for your 
Watch this. So now he tells him, take the sword. You kill all those false prophets. And it was a great victory won. We know the Bible goes on to talk about he goes into a mountain to pray. And he tells him to pray. And he sends a young man out and he goes, what do you see? And he goes, we don't see nothing. And he says, go again. That's what Pastor Tommy Bates just got finished saying. I don't care how long I knock. I'm going to keep knocking until the door opens. See, that's somebody that understands prayer. You don't stop till you get it. Some of you stop halfway and you wonder why you ain't got your victory. Some of you only go for 25 seconds and wonder why you don't get a breakthrough. No, baby, knock until you get it. Pray until you get it. Holler until he say, blind by the man, come on. I'm about to open up your eyes. See, miracles require work. A lot of people don't think that miracles require work. Really? Then how come the woman with the issue of blood had to press away through a crowd of grown men in her pain to get her miracle? If miracles don't require work, why did Zacchaeus climb a tree to see Jesus and men break a hole through a roof to lower him down? If miracles don't require work, amen, then why when Jesus multiplied the loaves and the fishes, he had to have people pass out the miracle? If miracles don't require work, why when Jesus filled the fish with net, Jesus didn't help pull it in. They had to call other fishermen to come and pull the miracle in the boat because miracles require work. Don't tell me you're going to get a miracle sitting there quiet, won't shout, won't clap, won't run. You don't want to do the work, but real miracles require somebody to get up and give God a real praise. Shout like you want a miracle. Shout like you want Shout like you want victory. Look at your neighbor and say, excuse me, neighbor. I don't mean to be Pentecostal. But I ain't finished working yet. Tell your neighbor, I got one more miracle in me. So give me 30 seconds to give him another shout of praise.
High five, five people around you. A shot is already done. Come on, the devil's mad now. High five, five more people. It's already done. It's already done.
spirit of God to pour out on you, I want you to come out of your seat right now. If you want your Sunday school and you group on fire, I want you to come out of your seat right now. Pastors, bring your families. Mothers and kids, bring your families. Come to the altar and look for the fire and the Holy Ghost to pour on your son, on your daughter, on your youth group. Start praying for young people. Start praying for deliverance. 